Welcome to this third and final screencast on electrochemical thermodynamics. In this screencast, we will discuss the Pourbaix diagram. Now, what is a Pourbaix diagram? Well, here on the right, you see one, namely for zinc. What you see on the x-axis is the pH, and on the y-axis is the potential versus the standard hydrogen electrode. So the potential the material is experiencing. So basically what you can see is, for example, for pH 4 and uh, a potential of 0 volt, uh, you can see that zinc is most stable in its 2 plus state. Well, we, when we then reduce the potential, for example, to minus, uh, minus 1, then metallic zinc is most stable. Zinc is, is quite a non-noble metal, so you really need to go to low potentials to enable... Uh, a stable phase for metallic zinc. So that is also shown by this poor bad diagram, but it shows much more. It also shows that at higher pHs uh, you get oxide uh, formation. So uh, there, there's quite some information you can get from a poor bad diagram. It's often used in corrosion science, where it it yeah basically helps of how yeah what does a material corrode or not. And in, in electrochemistry, we can also use it to, to, for example, pick a suitable electrode material. Zinc is probably not, is, is just not the best anode, because, uh, especially not at low pH, because it will be easily oxidized. Um, now, a poor bed diagram, can you can actually make poor bed diagrams yourself based on uh, information and literature. All you need are standard electrode potentials, solubility products, and, and the Nernst equation. And we will show you in this screencast how you can make a poor bed diagram. Uh, for that, it is important that in, in the calculations you uh, need to make uh, to construct a poor bed diagram, the concentration you uh, have to use is 10 to the minus 6 molar. So that is important, and I'll show you that in the, in the next slides. Now let's have a look at another poor bed diagram to show how you can construct these. This is the poor bed diagram of iron, which is significantly more complex than the one of, of zinc. Let's, let's look at certain lines. For example, this line between iron 3 and iron 2. This line, you can see here, basically corresponds to this equation. Iron 3 plus electron gives iron 2. And that has a potential which we can just look up. Standard electrode potential of 0 0.771 volts versus a standard hydrogen electrode. And that's exactly this potential. You see it's a straight line. It's independent of pH, which makes sense. Because uh, there are no protons or uh, hydroxides uh, in this equation. So it, it makes sense that it's independent of pH. Another relatively easy to understand line is the line between iron 2 and metallic iron which you see, see here um, and that corresponds to this equation with this potential now there are also these vertical lines such as line 3 line 3 is as you can see on the one hand we have iron 3 and on the other side we have iron 2 O3 if you just think about the oxidation states, then you see that the iron in, in, this, in this molecule is still iron 3. So this is not an, a redox reaction. Actually, it's just uh, basically it's just a solubility product. And that's what you can see here. Iron uh, hydroxide uh, reacts to iron 3 plus plus 3 OH minus. And this is the solubility uh, product. Now, you can make the calculation. The solubility calculation, if you, if you remember, uh, iron 3 multiplied by OH minus to the third is a solubility product. And now we can basically rewrite this a bit. We want to know iron 3, the iron 3 plus concentration. Now we need to fill in this one 10 to the minus uh, 6 molar. Uh, if we do that, we fill in the equation with solubility products. And uh, we make the, the right calculations. You come to an OH minus concentration of 1.41 10 to the minus 11. Now, if you take, uh, if you convert that to the pH, basically you can take the log of this and you get the pOH. 
and you need to uh, take 14 and reduce the POH and you get the pH and that is then 3.15 and that is then how you come to this vertical line there are no electrons involved so this reaction does not depend on uh, the potential now let's have a look at one of the more difficult lines in a poor bed diagram namely this line four it's not horizontal it's not vertical and and that makes makes sense when you start looking at the equation this is the equation that belongs to this line iron hydroxide plus electron gives iron 2 plus 3 over h minus and uh, as you can see in this equation we have an electron but we also have three OH minuses. So that makes uh, the electron makes that the reaction is potential dependent and the OH minus mean that the reaction is pH dependent. Now what we could consider doing is taking the Nernst equation of this reaction. E is E0 plus RT uh, divided by F ln of this term. But the problem is, is that when you start looking for the E0 of this equation, you're not going to find it. Uh, because it's not uh, in the list and there is a reason for that actually this reaction is is a composition reaction you could say and actually if you start thinking about it it consists of two reactions first the iron uh, hydroxide uh, basically this dissolves to a very small amount because we know uh, that will not happen easily at, at high ph but it could be a very small amount um, and, and then the next step is that the iron 3 absorbs an electron and becomes iron 2. So you could, yeah, we can split this reaction in two. And then we can do some, some nice stuff. Because for the first reaction, we can take the solubility product. As you can see here, as we did on the previous slide. Uh, and we can recalculate that the iron 3 con concentration is the solubility product divided by the OH minus concentration to the power 3. Uh, and the other reaction we have also seen on the previous slide, and we say, hey, this this has a potential E is E zero RTF and then iron three uh, divided by iron two. And of this reaction, we do know the standard uh, electrode uh, potential. So now we can take uh, the next steps here, and uh, we can basically use basically fill in the first equation into the second equation. So the iron three concentration is the solubility product divided by OH, the OH minus concentration to the factor to a factor three and then you get this equation and now in this equation E0 actually belongs to the iron three iron two reaction and not to the uh, reaction on the top also if you compare this reaction to that reaction you see that uh, they are not exactly the same the KSP uh, is, is here now, uh, how do we then now get to, to the, the line here? So then we need to do some rewriting. So we say AE is E0, and, and we basically take out the terms from the natural uh, logarithm, uh, and we can start filling those in. So 0 0.77, and the ln of the solubility, 2.27, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. And then in the, finally, you get you find that the, this, the equation for this reaction is, so the potential is 1.33 uh, minus 0 0.177 multiplied by the pH. Also, if you would put this line, you would see indeed it's about 1.33 uh, where it hits uh, the, the y-axis. So it, it's in line with, uh, with what we see here. But you see it, well, it takes a bit more effort to uh, come to uh, these to, to come to the the right equations for these lines that are are not straight well that brings us to the end of the last screencast on electrochemical uh, thermodynamics well just to uh, to summarize the key takeaway from the three screencasts so what can we do uh, we can use electrochemical to thermodynamics to determine equilibrium cell potentials we can calculate electrode potentials for half reactions, and we can predict the stable state of metals from poor bed diagrams. Those are, those are the three things I would like you, uh, at least the least I would like you to, to remember. And with that, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention, and I hope to see you back in one of the other modules.